over the course of our lives, most of us have been or will be betrayed by someone. But what does that mean, to be betrayed? And how does it affect our trust? See, those questions fascinate me. I'm a social psychologist. I study human interactions and human behavior in the presence of others. So wanting to know more about trust and betrayal, I started asking people. In a recent study, I asked more than 900 participants to recall one life event when they had felt betrayed by someone. One participant, we'll call him Henry, said the following. We were both down for a promotion and both agreed to not apply for it. Let the business decide is what we agreed. However, my colleague applied, and as I did not, she got the rule. The business thought I wasn't interested, and it was then too late to do anything about it. When people experience a situation like that, it often decreases their trust in the person who betrayed them. Research has shown this for a really long time. But there's one thing we know less about, and that's how this situation may impact the capacity to trust other people in future interactions. And this is what I wanted to know. So let's dig into it. Now, first thing first, we need to understand trust. In the psychology literature, we define trust as a psychological state comprising the intention to accept vulnerability based upon positive expectations of the intentions or behavior of another. Sometimes all goes well. You entrust your best friend with an important secret and she doesn't repeat it to anyone. Or you share a brilliant idea with your work colleague and he doesn't go to your boss pretending it's his. But sometimes it doesn't go well. When you trust somebody and they act in a way that breaches your trust, we talk about a betrayal. Now research on the topic tells us a few things. Betrayal is frequent in everyday life. It happens amongst partners, but also family, friends, and in the workplace. And it can take many forms with different levels of severity, ranging from disappointing expectations to lying, revealing secrets, being unfaithful, manipulating, and even abusing. In some cases, you are able to forgive especially when the betrayer shows remorse or apologizes. In other cases, though, it's not possible. Often, you're left feeling hurt, dejected, and angry, and you might break off the relationship. So it's quite clear that betrayal has negative consequences. Well, at least for that specific relationship. Because beyond that, we know much less about the potential impact on the capacity to trust in general. And one idea I started developing about two years ago is that betrayal may also affect trust in other people who had nothing to do with the situation. Let's come back to Henry for a second. What I suspected is that Henry may now stop trusting other people in the workplace. Even if he changes team, it might be very difficult for him to trust his new colleagues. One recent study by Bayer and colleagues supports this idea. The researchers surveyed office workers every day for a few weeks. Every day, the employees reported whether something good or bad had happened that day, and also how much they trusted others. Results show that when employees encountered a breach of trust by one colleague on one day, they were less trusting of all colleagues the next day. Now, part of this is adaptive. It's a social learning process. You learn to recognize and remember the people who are not trustworthy, so you avoid being fooled again in the future. But the loss of trust might go too far you might stop trusting people who would objectively deserve your trust. And this is where things get problematic, because mistrust trumps trust. So now comes the question, how do we solve this? Well, the solution may come in part from understanding exactly how the loss of trust 
spreads. In my research, I found that betrayal was mostly damaging trust in similar others. What I mean by that is that past betrayal by a partner mostly damaged trust in new partners. And past betrayal by a colleague mostly damaged trust in new colleagues. The effects from past partner to new colleague and vice versa were much smaller. And so this tells us something. Apparently, we create and we manage trust expectations within the boundaries of social categories. By social category, I mean any group of people who share common traits and characteristics. That can be your group of friends, your group of colleagues, but also men or women or people from a given nationality. When we think in social categories, we tend to focus on the things that the members of that group have in common, and we expect them to all behave in the same way. And so it seems that when you are betrayed by someone, you are made aware of the social groups that this person belongs to, and you update your beliefs about this group specifically. And this is how we lose trust from the person to the social category. Now let's come back to Henry once more. So Henry's reflecting about the event with his colleague, and he thinks, you know, that colleague, she betrayed me because that's how people in this company are. They have no morals. They only think of themselves, and they're all the same. Now, this way of thinking makes Henry mistrust his entire group of colleagues. But Henry could also think about the situation differently. He could start thinking, you know, that colleague, she, only she is a bad person. She's deceptive and arrogant, and that explains why she would act in such a selfish manner. Such reasons can pertain to the colleague's personality, her past, the pressure she's currently under, and so on. But importantly, this type of explanations is much less likely to end up in losing trust in entire group of people, because there's no social group in Henry's mind now, just the colleague as a person. And so the loss of trust would remain limited to that person and spread no further. This, again, is what I found in my research. As previously, I asked participants to recall one past betrayal. Then I asked them how much they would expect to be betrayed again in a similar situation by a different people, by a different person. Now, those who explain the betrayal through reasons related to the social category of the betrayer, they mostly expect it to be betrayed again. But those who explained it through reasons related to their personality, they expected it much less. Their trust was less shattered. And this is the point I want to make. We can limit the loss of trust by encouraging people to think about others more as unique human beings with their strengths and their weaknesses, and less as members of social categories. Now, before concluding, I'd like to make one last thing clear. It's not always a bad thing to distrust. You don't want to be gullible or naive. The research is very clear on one point. People who trust report higher job satisfaction, more love and happiness in close relationships, greater political and social engagement, and they are in better health. And this is why losing trust in entire groups of people can be so damaging. Life is better when you trust. Thank you.